Hello and welcome. The number of uh, COVID and coronavirus cases continue to rise, uh, not just in India, but around the world, and as do the number of recoveries and as do the number of uh, deaths. Now, the bigger problem in some ways, as the World Health Organization itself is defined, is the infodemic and not just the pandemic that we are all aware of and uh, encountering on a daily basis. Dealing with the infodemic requires a different set of skills. We at Boom uh, continue to do it and have been doing it actively for the last uh, six to eight weeks around COVID. But uh, it's also important to uh, recognize and acknowledge the work that scientists are doing also to debunk the myths that are uh, that are spreading as like wildfire around coronavirus. The uh, an alliance of now over 500 scientists has come together in, in India to uh, fight all the fake news that uh, has been uh, emanating and being generated around coronavirus. So to understand how this uh, alliance of uh, over 500 scientists is working, I'm uh, joined by uh, uh, Sandhya Kosh Koshika, an associate professor at the Data Institute of Fundamental Research in uh, Mumbai. Sandhya, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. So, uh, uh, Sandhya, you're a neuro neuroscientist. And uh, so tell us, how did you get interested in uh, or get think about responding to this problem? And uh, how did this alliance come together? So I think I was following this. I'm generally interested in lots of things in science. So I started following this sometime end of December uh, when the report went to um, the World Health Organization. And then the first paper came out with the sequence. And I generally sort of kept myself informed about these sorts of things when Ebola happened, when MERS happened. And I could quickly see things were changing in the world, in the, um, in the way this COVID-19 was spreading. It was mm -hmm. really unprecedented, yeah. I felt. And I started making some personal choices myself. Like on March 9th, I started sending people home. I said, you know, if you're coming by uh, coming by trains, I don't want you to come anymore to the lab. Just stay home. It's not important. So well before the government sort of got into it. The other thing was family WhatsApp groups. I'm sure you all have this experience. It's really terrifying. You know, extremely educated people making baseless claims, people who would never expect saying that, you know, there is no problem. Where is the problem? I'm not seeing any deaths. And, you know, you're not asking, st are telling people stand far away from each other is not, it's not a cure. It's not going to do anything. I was quite horrifying. I was, I felt if I was, I'm, I mean, actually only in one, two family WhatsApp groups. And if this was my situation, I could imagine that how much worse it is and how difficult it is for people right. to digest. Now, amount of information that's coming their way, things are changing. First it was no mask, then it became, you know, no, no, maybe you should wear a mask. And is it scientifically justified? Is it just a sop? So you feel you're doing something. And I felt there was a role here for scientists to play. The role that the scientists had to play is a lot of the literature is unpublished. We can read it. And for most part, understand it and interpret it in a manner which we can explain to the public. So it is required people like me to become science communicators. We were, you know, baby fledgling science communicators and we are still fledgling science communicators, but we had to learn these skills extremely rapidly. I think that was the primary motivation to sort of get into this right. because you saw that misinformation. Right. And and how did this alliance uh, start coming together? You were about 400 earlier. Now I understand you're uh, almost 500. So I don't know how it grew because Gautam Menon, who is a long-term collaborator of mine, um, said, hey, you know, would you be interested in joining with scientists, maybe discussing papers and... Uh, talking about this or, you know, trying to do something about all these things which are coming by WhatsApp. I said, I immediately put up my hand and said, yes. In fact, I was going, I was giving a chai and why just around that time that this thing was started. Uh, and chai and why is a TIFR outreach platform where I spoke about COVID and what was the state of understanding at the end. So I said, yes. And there were four headings. Uh, and one of them was hoax busting, second was science popularization, another was mathematical modeling, which my colleague, uh, uh, which my collaborator Gautam does, and one was app development. It was clearly two of those I don't have the skills to do. And I felt I could not do science popularization well, and I felt passionately about hoax busting because I was quite frankly offended by the things that was going around and what was going And this is without watching any TV or watching YouTube or any of those things. And very soon, I think it was word of mouth, 
people just started joining and it soon became a community it's actually become a very nice community where papers are discussed things are reported sometimes the hoax busters group sort of say oh yeah we saw that paper over there then we read it so we have a whole structure that set up which now i think feeds the effort and and it's you know people came together organically right I the characteristic is very passionate people at least the core working people are very passionate very hard working okay. Right, and I think the the point you made about science communication is very important. In addition to hoax busting, and I'll come back to that in a in a second. So, what are the two or three areas that uh, uh, that you are focused more on? I mean, how are you picking up stuff? What are you responding to? And where are you finding most of the hoaxes? So, I think our first hoax series that we did, which is already up on the website, it was everybody had come across them somewhere, either online or in uh, on WhatsApp groups, or people were just saying it. So that first set was very easy to do and the second set has taken a little bit more time because we've done a whole set of them and again we sort of look at what people are sending in the main google group what we are seeing in our family whatsapp group what's out there you know the most recent one which will be out today you can see in our social media is people are cutting trees to sort of you know displace bats and we said oh yeah day before yesterday we decided we would do it and today it's done mm. right that's the speed at which if we see something is very important and it's important that we do it now we halt all the other work and get to hoax busting there are two other series we did one we did was okay we are telling people what they should not do we should tell people what they do so the hoax busting group also did what we call the do's and don'ts series or do what it takes don't believe in fakes and we also started doing a q and a on covid it's called be covid wise But right, just and, your, and your, just to, just to remind everyone, and we'll add it later. Your website is called uh, indcov.in. It's i n d s c i c o v dot i n, and uh, then I'm sure you can follow the uh, you can follow the links. So yes, so uh, tell us about uh, uh, the other sort of buckets of areas. So for instance, let's say when we cover uh, misinformation, we're looking at let's say uh, cures, and cures itself is a big problem. Uh, we also look at let's say how maybe this. crisis is being converted and uh, being pushed with communal overtones but that's not your uh, area of focus but uh, but even within that so there is you're a scientist you're not a doctor as in you're not a medical doctor a lot of it is to do with medicine so how are you distinguishing very very difficult we try to stay away from giving advice to people at least the hoax busting group tries very hard in fact look at the material we try very hard to stay away from uh to stick to the science i would say because you can't really give advice to people sensibly uh mm-hmm. and say uh, unless it's something like you know we could give advice for people for giving masks but we have sort of stayed away from it we have tried to say let's answer questions about covid let's answer myths that they have for instance one of the things is covid was created in a laboratory and that mm-hmm. was the first hoax we took up and we addressed and mm-hmm. and now it's become even more relevant and we're thinking okay now that this nobel laureate has said that you know it can it is created in the lab, laboratory should we revisit it should we expand it should we write something more about it or should we leave it because we've said everything that needs to be said so we really stayed focused on the science and i think that is our strength our group strength is that we're filled with a lot of scientists we have got a fair number of science communicators as well and so we try to stick with the science if there is something which comes which is in the more medical angle we are very careful about what we do and if it comes more with societal issues we usually send it to science popularization right and and uh, you know the the laboratory in wuhan uh, is is a big one and it keeps coming back so what what are your what are your colleagues saying about that and how did you arrive at the conclusion that you did so we just looked at i mean there are very many credible scientists the sequences are publicly available and more than one person who's an expert in the field you can say i'm a neuroscientist i'm not an expert more than one person who's an expert in the field has looked at the science sequences and we can look at them as well and it certainly looks like something which has come with you know there is some contribution from bats maybe from pangolins but it doesn't have any signature which suggests that it has come from a laboratory right mm-hmm. even what he says all rna viruses have some sequences which are common so hiv is an rna virus as is coronavirus this is a very old viruses they have been around for ages so mm-hmm. there's nothing to suggest in the sequence that it was you know let loose from a laboratory and i think we should be very careful about making such claims especially mm-hmm. when they are debunked so well in fact i'll suggest something for your readers um mm-hmm. 
Francis Collins, who is the director of the National Institute of Health, has a very nice blog he's written on the National Institute of Health addressing specifically this question. That's also referenced in our little article, you know, little short paragraph that we write with the books. So things like that. So when he comes back, we revisit. For instance, mm -hmm. I have another example. As the science changes, we also update our information. So initially, the idea was that you don't have to fear touching pets. Your pets are not going to get COVID or get COVID. So we said, can you get COVID from your pets? He said, it's not true. You should just interact with them. And then we had this information which came that cats were getting it, right, and the, in, the, in the New York Zoo. Then we rewrote that, re-referenced it, released a new info. So we are very responsive to how the science is changing. And as the science changes and we see it, we prioritize that, make a difference, and put it up on the website. And you will also see it sometime this week. Right. And, and are you, uh, uh, you know, in, uh, no, this is a global problem. And there is, uh, there are a lot of smart people working on this uh, all over the world, including in India. Now, uh, are you seeing, uh, let's say, some spe specific disciplines uh, being more concentrated in some parts of the world? Are you also collaborating globally? And are there other disciplines so there where we, we, know, we, know, we know better in India? Um, I would say this is a global problem. I think the modeling effort and anchoring the modeling effort in Indian data is very much an Indian strength, which we need. And then there are two groups, uh, multiple groups, which have put up models and, you know, including the people who are working with InSciCorp, and that's on the website, you can look at it. And there's also some new press that has come, but there are also others in the country. For instance, TIFR and ISC has got an uh, agent-based model. Other people have... SIER type models, this is just technical terms, and they're looking at statewide. So that is truly unique. I would mm -hmm. say in terms of busting hoaxes, the kind of hoaxes you have in India are different from the kind of hoaxes. Some of them are very different from the kinds of hoaxes you see other parts of the world. Other parts yeah. of the world, for instance, are not trying to cut trees to kill bats, as far as I know. So you have to address that. I think I think, I think the strength of inside COVID is very India-facing. It's informed by all of the stuff that happens uh, internationally and the skills that we have, of course, are universal skills as scientists, but it's informed by the Indian context. So I think that's very important. Right. And uh, uh, last question, uh, how, what, is the, what, what are most of your scientists, I mean, what is the uh, specialization uh, so that it helps us also understand what are the areas that you could attack uh, swiftly and uh, more credibly? So there are a bunch of people, there are a few neuroscientists, there are people who work on origin of life, uh, there are engineers, um, there are, who are in places like computer scientists, um, there are people who work on bacteria and evolution. So it's a diverse group and we also have a core group of science communicators. And uh, there are two or three science communicators, the computer scientists, and there are so with us, the biologists, the non-biologists all come together to be able to read, interpret, and explain the science that we see. I think that is really the strength right. of our group. Right. And and uh, we do hope that uh, you're able to continue to this work beyond COVID because the challenges of misinformation go much beyond uh, COVID and have to be addressed at a much, much uh, larger and sustained uh, manner. And we do look forward to working trying. with you as well. <laughs> We also release everything in, you know, 14 Indian languages. Yeah. Right. Yes, absolutely. Okay. And, 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 I, I so. yeah. and, and, and I do encourage. Yeah. And we also release to... all our material in yeah. Indian languages. So we are constantly trying to reach out to the public. And if you can help us disseminate it, everything is freely downloaded. Please use and send across to people. Absolutely. Thank you so much for uh, speaking to us, Sandhya Kaushika, uh, professor at the TIFR of the Tata Institute of Fundamental Research. Thank you very much and all the best with your efforts.